So it's about to get real. Bobby Belt, Cowboys insider, reported that the Cowboys could move on from Amari Cooper and D-Law this offseason. Here we go. Good people, it's your boy Mr. Rome, Cowboys fan talk, right back like I never left. <laughs> it is real, very, very real. Um, this one I couldn't wait till I got home and jumped in my little office studio thing to talk about. This is something I got to get out there now. Um, Cowboys are reportedly considering moving on from not only Demarcus Lawrence, but Amari Cooper. Now, look, before I get deep into this, y'all, y'all better capologists than me. You know, you can go to sports track or go to over the cap.com, get the details on the contracts, um, the dead money situation. I think Amari's supposed to make 20 million. Tank's supposed to make 27 million. You move on from one. Um, I think Tank has like a $19 million cap hit. Amari has a $6 million cap hit. If you move on or dead money, rather dead money. Um, like I said, y'all better than me at this. Y'all let me know um, money-wise if it's good to move on from either. Um, I know it will create savings or this wouldn't be a discussion. So it's not just a we're moving on because of play. But this is real, man. This is like a changing of the guard. You can look at it two ways. You can say it don't matter who we move on from. What we've been doing before haven't hasn't gotten it done. You want to take a cynical approach, you can say, we got to do better, period. Maybe new players will produce new results. You know, last year we turned over most of the defense. And defense got better. You know, um, this year we spent at least, I think, like seven or eight games without D-Law. And we 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 kind of held on. I ain't going to lie. But then when D-Law came back, defense looked better. So you, you kind of, like, don't know what is what. You know, um, then you got Amari Cooper, who is immensely talented, who gets busy. Um, probably still the best receiver on this team. As much as I was back in C.D. Lamb saying that it was his time, he kind of didn't show up sometimes this year, you know. And it's not that I don't – C.D. going to be a beast. Uh, maybe this is the year he makes that step. Last year I thought he was going to make the step a little early. And I and him, we both got humbled. So <laughs> – um, Amari Cooper still needed, still valued on his team. Tank Lawrence is still valued on his team, but according to the reports from Bobby Belt, now it's raining. I don't know if y'all can probably hear that. Y'all probably can. Um, according to the reports, we moving on from both, or at least one of them. Now, I know the question from y'all is going to be, well, who you want to keep? And after some thinking about this, I think I would want to keep Coop, man. Um... With the emergence of Micah Parsons, um, and I promise this isn't a slight to Demarcus Lawrence. D Law is a beast. He's been a leader for this team. He's been amazing for this team. Um, but my thing is this: with the emergence of Micah Parsons as the new defensive leader, um, y'all saw Micah yesterday. Y'all saw him winning the fastest man in the NFL. And I know Tyreek wasn't running full strength and all that extra stuff. I'm just saying, like everything Micah does shows leadership. So I think he will be up for the task. He's not a rookie anymore. We can put that to bed, you know. But, yeah, I think I'm going to roll with – I think I'll roll with D-Law, man. Amari Cooper's just so important to this offense, and I would love to see Amari Cooper in an offense, offensive scheme where he is targeted on purpose, not just the play calls for you to get the ball, and if I don't call a play for you to get the ball, we're not thinking about it. And that, that's not just on Kellen Moore, as much as I want to say it's on Kellen Moore. It's on Dak to force the ball to Amari, too. And y'all you know, know I love Dak. But um, I just call him a spade a spade, keeping it real. Um, Dak has to make an effort to get Coop the ball. But the scheme also has to dictate situations where Coop deserves the ball. Like some of those situations where I saw Dalton Schultz getting one-on-one -on -one, um, opportunities. That should be Coop every time. We should roll coverage to the other side and let Coop go one-on-one. -on -one because not only do we pay him to do that, He's very capable of doing that. You know, one of, if not the best route runner in the league, he deserves that. And I don't think that you move on from him 
let some other team reap the benefits without keeping your asset that you invested in and letting him do his job. So I think you keep Coop. I think that stretch we did last year where D-Law messed his foot up and we not only survived, the defense was really coming together with a lot of young players. I think that, um, I really do think that we could survive and thrive without, um, without D-Law. That's hard to say. But look, if you're wondering, like, how can we possibly do that? Remember, we moved on from another DeMarcus that was even better than D-Law before. Now, I'm not saying that we survived and thrived. We didn't, we didn't win a chip. He did. But I'm saying that we have ripped this type of Band-Aid off before. You know, where it went to the Broncos, the rest is history. Hopefully, DeMarcus Lawrence don't go like Chidobe and Wouzier and come back to bite us and just go win a championship somewhere else. But... In a salary cap league, that's the game we play. And I know, before I go, before I get up out of here, I already know I can hear it. This is why you don't sign Dak Prescott. And blah, 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 blah. I don't want to hear it. Most of y'all that say Dak and his $40 million contract don't even really know what he's making per year. Do yourself a favor. Go to the sports track and look at Dak's contract. Remember, we paid Dak Prescott $75 million last year. Right? Although it hurt, it was smart. Because now Dax Prescott's contract is like high 20s or I think like low 30s. He's making a minimal amount. He's not making 40 a year. That's why we paid him so much the first year. So everybody's so mad at Dax's contract. We do realize that the Cowboys being smart with the way they do their finances. We're not paying a $40 million a year contract. We've already paid most of that. So y'all coming in here to cry about that. That's like crying about rent you paid two, two years ago. Man, I paid that rent last October. Like, shut up. The money's been paid. It's in his pocket. It's not hurting this team like y'all think it is. He's making minimum money. He's making like Jimmy G money right now. He's not making 40 a year. I know when he signed it, it was to be 40 a year, but that's not how contracts work. You don't pay the exact amount every year. You know, a little uplift. So go to sports track or over the cap. Look at Dak's contract. Uplift yourself. Stop just coming on here crying, making up stuff. As far as with Amari and um, D-Law, you know, we move on from both. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. That That's going to be a conundrum. I'm going to have to come on here and explain that. But if we have to pick one, I think I'm going to go with Coop. You know, keep Coop. Let D-Law go on. And hopefully he has success, man. I ain't got no hate for D-Law. But y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Um, who would you want to keep? Would you want to get rid of both? Um, and just how you feeling about this whole situation, man? It's the Cowboys offseason. Y'all know Dollar General Jones ain't paying nobody. It's just the way of the life. It's the life we chose <laughs> as a Cowboys fan. Ah,